Hi, welcome to Prajim Technologies. This is Prasad Chirakuri. Today we'll be talking about one of the very important interview question. What are generics or what are the advantages of using generics? Before we can understand that, let's try and understand what arrays are and what .NET version 1.0 collections are. We will basically try and understand the advantages and disadvantages of both these concepts. Let's look at an example of using arrays. For example, if I have to create an integer array, I will say int numbers equals new integer. And I'm basically initializing the size of this particular array to 3. So numbers of 0 equals 101. Since the size of the array is 3, I can only hold 3 elements inside that. Okay. So we created the array of type integer. We have set the size to 3 and we have stored 3 elements into this collection. And if I want to print these elements out of this collection, I will retrieve them using the for each loop and then print them out. So console.write line. Hi. So what is this program doing? Creating an array and then populating them with these values and then we are trying to print them out. So if we go ahead and run this, you will see the output 101, 102, 103 as expected. Okay, now let's understand the advantage of using arrays. Arrays are strongly typed, meaning since this array is an integer array, you can only store integers into this collection. If I try to store an element of a different data type, for example, a string, we will get a compiler error because this is an integer array and you can only store integers because it inti because arrays are strongly typed so we already have an error if you look at the error list cannot implicitly convert type string to integer because arrays are strongly typed so a very great advantage of using arrays is they are strongly typed because of which indirectly we have two advantages one we don't run into any runtime errors, um, you know, because you are forced to initialize this collection with elements of integer data type alone in this specific case. If you try to store elements of any other data type, you know, even if you do that accidentally, that will be flagged as an error by the compiler. So we will come to know any errors like this at compile time itself. And another advantage is performance. We will better understand this when we talk about .NET version 1.0 collections. Okay, so one thing that we have to understand at this time, arrays are strongly typed and it is definitely a very great feature that arrays has. But arrays has downsides as well. One is once you fix the size of an array, they cannot grow in size. For example, here I said the size of this array is 3. If I try to store a fourth element into this particular collection, now when I go ahead and compile this, the application will compile without any problem. So if you look at the status bar, build succeeded. But when I actually run this, we get a runtime exception. So it says unhandled exception, index out of range exception. That's And that makes sense because the size of the array is 3, but you're trying to store a fourth element, you know, whose size is 3. So so these, these arrays cannot grow in size once initialized. And these errors could appear at runtime. There is no way to capture these at compile time. Okay, so this is one disadvantage. Another disadvantage, in order to assign elements to this collection, to arrays, the only way you have is to use these integer indexes. There is no other way. But whereas with the .NET version 1.0 collections, we have several convenient methods, which we will see just in, just in a bit. So if you look at this, so arrays are strongly typed, meaning you can only add one type of element into this collection. And uh, what are the disadvantages? They are, you know, integral index based, zero index based, and they cannot grow in size automatically once initialized to a certain value. Now let's go ahead and look at .NET version 1.0 collections. Now we have several classes in 
.NET 1.0 collections like ArrayLess, HashTable, Stack, and Queue. Basically, let's examine how ArrayLess work. So let's say I want to create an ArrayLess. Now, all .NET version 1.0 collections are in system dot collections namespace so you will have to use this namespace so array list let's say for example numbers is equal to new array list and I'm setting the size of this collection to 3 now let's say numbers now in order to add elements to this collection I can use an integral indexer if I want but I can also use this convenient method like add let's say 101 and if I want to add multiple elements I can go ahead and do that 102 103 etc and if I want to print these numbers what I can do is I can make use of the for each loop Right. So now, if I go ahead and run, the output is exactly similar except that now instead of an array, we are using collections that are present in .NET version 1.0. Now, look at this. Um, these, this collection, this array list collection numbers, you know, I have set the size to 3. If I try to add a fourth element, what happens? Let's go ahead and see that. Now, let's say I'm, I'm adding a fourth element. Now, if I go ahead and run this, it compiles and runs successfully. In spite of the size being 3, I am able to add a fourth element to this collection successfully without a compilation error or a runtime error. So that's one of the greatest advantage of using uh, uh, collections, .NET version 1.0 collections. The reason why I keep on saying .NET version 1.0 collections because in .NET version 2.0, generics are introduced. So to, to differentiate, and both of them are basically collections. So to differentiate between these two, I refer to ArrayList, HashTable, Stack, and Queue as .NET version 1.0 collections. All right, so we have already known that .NET version 1.0 collections, they can grow in size automatically. That's one of the advantages of using these collections. They can grow in size automatically. And they are convenient to work with as well. You don't have to rely on integral indexers like how we worked with arrays. You know, that way definitely works, but you are not limited to just using that way. You can use this convenient methods like add, you know, and if you want to remove elements from, you can say dot remove. I mean, if you want to remove an element at a specific location, then you can make use of remove at. Otherwise, if you know which element you want to remove, you can remove that element as well. Similarly, if you want to add an element, we say add. If you want to add a range of elements, then you can say add range. Similarly, if you want to remove a range of elements from the collection, you can make use of remove range. So we have these convenient methods basically to work with collections. You are not limited just to using those integral indexers, like how we are limited with arrays. But what is the downside of using these collections? The downside is these collections, none of these collection classes in system.collections namespace are strongly typed. Meaning, if you look at this, when I say add, this array list, hash table, stack, and queue, all .NET version 1.0 collections, they operate on the object data type. Okay, now we know that in .NET, all types, directly or indirectly, inherit from object type. So based on that fact, you can add any element of any data type to this collection. For example, here I'm adding an integer, and somewhere down the line, if you want to add an element of type string, it will still allow that because it operates on the object data type. For example, let's say Prajim. Okay, now if I go ahead and build this, it happily compiles, but when I actually run this program, it works until 104, but after that, you know, it, it, it tries to take this word and convert it into integer and it 
and we get an unhandled exception, invalid cast exception. And that makes sense because we cannot convert the string into an integer. Okay, so this is the problem with collections. Since they operate on the object type, you know, users can inadvertently add data types of, of you know, different types altogether. For example, you, they can add strings, integers, date times, etc. But when we actually try to retrieve those elements into one element like this, it will give us an invalid cast exception. And these are hard to find. At compile time, there is no way to detect them because they operate on the object type and, and it accepts any data type. So they are not strongly typed. And because of that, we have these hard to find runtime errors. Another disadvantage of using these collections, version 1.0 collections, is that since they operate on the object data type, as we have already seen from the IntelliSense, you know, this RLS, they operate on the object data type. Now, this 101 is an integer, meaning a value type. And since it is expecting an object, this 101 is now converted into, this 101, which is an integer, which is a value type, is actually converted into a reference type. So converting value types into reference types is called boxing. So boxing is happening here unnecessarily. And there is that overhead involved. And then when we actually retrieve those elements out of this collection, try to print them, we try to store this object, you know, the boxed value 101, which is an object form, or which is in a reference form, now into a value type. So unboxing is happening. So boxing and unboxing happens when you add and remove value types to .NET version 1.0 collections because they operate on object data type. And this will have a ne negative impact on the performance, unnecessary boxing and, bo and unboxing. All right. So because these .NET version 1.0 collections lost their strongly typed nature, we have these disadvantages. You can inadvertently end up adding uh, elements of different data types which will present with present you with runtime errors hard to find runtime errors and another one is an unnecessary boxing and unboxing happens when you add a value type to any of the dotnet version 1.0 collections and because of which there will be a negative impact on the performance in order to solve all these problems associated see the problem with that is is they cannot grow in size automatically and uh, they they the only way to work with them is to use those zero-based indices, indexes. But whereas with .NET version 1.0 collections, you know, you lost that strongly typed nature. Now, generics actually combines best of both the worlds. Now, they are strongly typed like arrays, meaning they are type, they, they are type safe, meaning there is no more danger of inadvertently adding elements of different data types, and you don't encounter any runtime errors because of type mismatches at runtime so that's a good feature they're type safe like arrays and they can also grow in size automatically even if you have set an initial size like rls like dotnet version 1.0 collections and these generics also have these convenient methods like add add range remove remove range remove add methods which are very convenient to work with now let's quickly look at an example of how to use uh, collections from generics before we do that i told you in .NET version 1.0 collection, we have array list, hash table, stack, and queue. And for every class in system.collections in .NET version 1.0 collections, we have a respective counterpart in generics. For example, for array list, we have a list of T. Now, this T is the type of element that you want to add to this list. Let's look at an example, and that will make it clear. But before that, you know, for array list, it's a list of T. For hash table, it is dictionary. For stack, stack of t, q, q of t. Now let's look at an example. Now, if I want to create, or if I want to use generics, there is a namespace for that using system dot collections dot generics. You have to import that namespace. Now, if I want to use a list, so I will say list. And you have to specify the type for that. So list of, look at this, T. T meaning the type of an element that you want to store. For example, if I want to store integers, I will say list of int. If I want to store strings, I can say list of string. But in this case, integers, so list of int. And I can say 
new list of integer and then look at this if you want you can specify an initial size for example let's say I want to hold three elements but you're not just limited to adding three elements you can add as many elements as you want so I am adding one one two three four elements and look at this this is already flagged as a compiler error cannot convert from cannot convert from string to integer because it knows look at the add method the intelligence shows you can only add an integer element to this collection because generics are strongly typed like arrays but here we're trying to add a string so we get a compiler error so these are strongly typed like arrays so we got that benefit and since the size is 3 here and I'm adding a fourth element but I still don't get any compiler or runtime error so if I go ahead and run this it will work without any problems so generics can grow in size automatically even after initializing to a specific value okay so just like collections okay and another advantage you can use these convenient methods add remove remove at etc so in short generics basically have best of both the worlds okay now if you want further information you can visit our website at prajeevdeck.com and for most valuable uh, you know ASP.NET and C sharp interview questions which are very frequently asked in most of the interviews you can refer to these sites until next time have a good evening I will see you later thank you